what are the big challenges to you mm. in uh, colonizing Mars from a biology perspective, from a human perspective, from an engineering perspective? There's several big challenges to Mars. And even the first one is even just the word colonize. So I think we, there's even a social challenge. Like a lot of people, um, Daniel Wood actually studies this at MIT, is we shouldn't even use the word colonize, but then we probably shouldn't use the word settle either because there's settlements that have some other baggage to that word as well. And then maybe we just use the word explore, but at some point you didn't say we're going there to survive there. And so colonization still is the word most people use, but I try to say go explore and build or settle. But I think the first challenge is, is social. I think getting people to think that this will not be like the colonization efforts of the past. The hope is that this will be a very different version of humanity exploring. That's my hope. History has, you could say, has proved me wrong every single time. Like every time humans have gone somewhere, it's usually been a tale of exploitation, strife, and and drama again, and then and and often murder, genocide. Like it's actually a pretty dark history if you think of of just all of the colonization efforts. But I think most of it was done in a really dark area of humanity, where there was average life expectancy was more than half less than it was today. It was uh, life was uh, brutish and short, as many of as Hobbes has famously said. So it was it was a rough existence, right? So I think some of the 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 ugliness of humanity in prior colonization times was was a consequence of the time, and or at least that's my hope. I think that now we would have it be much more, I think, uh, inclusive, much more responsible, much more much less you know evil frankly like we'd go there and and you would need commercialization you need efforts to do mining for example bring things back but it have to be some degree where there are some areas that are viewed as 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 commons or that are untouchable like places that are parks we do this today even if there's a a lake for example the first you know several hundred feet of a lake are all for public property and everything that you can own property but just not certain barriers so i think we'd have to make sure we do that so that it's not completely exploited but the so that's on the social the human side the technological, we've talked a little bit about where you'd have to live. You'd want to be underground with engineering and modifying even human cells to make sure you survive. Uh, the soil does have a lot of perchlorates, which is a problem for growing them, but there's ways to extract them. There's a fair amount of water. There's actually this beautiful image of all the known water on Mars that uh, NASA posted about a year ago. And there's water everywhere. Not not, not lots of it everywhere, but the, almost everywhere you look, there's at least a little bit of water, just a few feet under the surface. And by the caps, there's a lot. So I think we could get some water and we could also do you know, self-generating um, reactors, machines that could make food, start to even make beer uh, if you go long enough down the path. But the technical challenges are definitely, the, and the engineering and the manufacturing are, are gonna be hard because you have to build the buildings basically out of the soil that's there. So you have to really go there and try and build with whatever you can. So that has to be perfected still. But then once you're in those those buildings, those structures, you need to create all the biology that will feed the, the populace, feed them. So which we don't have the technology for yet. We have bits of it, but I think that's gonna be the biggest challenge is making Mars really truly independent. But that'll probably take, well, as I say in the book, several hundred years before I think we'd get there. It's interesting because we're also exploring ways to motivate the society to take on this challenge. It's the JFK thing yeah. and, and then the Cold War that inspired the race to space. And I think as a human species, we're actually trying to figure out different ideas for how to motivate everybody to work on the same project together. <laughs> but yet compete at the same time. Well, you, that's yeah. one idea and that's worked well. Competition. Competition. Yeah, yeah. That's not necessarily the only idea, but it's the one that worked well so far. So maybe the only way to truly build a colony in uh, on Mars or a successful sort of human civilization on Mars is to get like China to get like uh, competitive about it. I think, well, and they are, they, they've announced they wanna have boots on the red planet by 2033, which is two to four years earlier than when NASA's supposed to do it. Right. So we'll see if they if they get there first, but I think it's a space race 2.0, but it's not just the US and Russia this time, it's China, it's India, it's the UAE, it's Europe, ESA, uh, JAXA has the Japanese Space Agency and there's the US, so now, it, it went from a, just a two person race to, you know, a whole field at the, you know, the a whole field of uh, runners, if you will, on the track, trying to get to Mars first. And I think, I mean, it's going to be like anything. If you start to have settlements and con construction projects and places to visit on Mars, I think that the true mark of, of a place being actually settled is when you, you start to be able to pick. You're like, well, I want to go to this destination, not this one, because they have better Martian cocktails here, but the, yes. this one's not as good. So then... The, the, this idea of innovating and comp competing will continue to drive, I think, humans as it always has.